Hey guys, what's going on? So last week we showed you where we were going to put our batteries. We started the process and it was really exciting and now we have had one week of them working in our boat to get the stuff together to get the well let's show them what we're doing right Sounds what good. what we're not <clears throat> us doing what they're doing pictures worth a lot of words so let's show them instead and talk about it <laughs> Okay, so guys, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you what has happened on the boat so far since we started. Pull this panel up here. I cut down the line so that we'd be able to access these ports underneath. So there's a tank access port here. There's also one here. And I also put this in here just so that we can access clamps we need to and, and things like that. Because once the battery is going to be here, it'll be a pain in the neck to, to pull this all up. So underneath the floor, which... I think it's kind of cool. This is like the subfloor, which covers the tank. So what they did, they created this lattice structure to support this floor over the tanks. Because these are really, really heavy batteries, 140 pounds each. They're gonna be two batteries right here and one battery over there. So they put a lot of support here and uh, they did a great job. So the next thing they did is they mounted this battery management system, with the Onyx BMS, they call it. It's upside down, but that's okay. It still works the same way. <laughs> and we have our positive and our negative cables that go behind this little wall here. And there's a connection point. This will go throughout our boat on either side. We have our ground and we have our two positives. One is the load side and one is the charging side. And then here, there's a, just a plug-in back here. The batteries will plug into here. One of the things I really liked about this lithionic power management setup is that it has a separate load and charging side for positive. So um, they're independent of each other. So you could be charging the battery and um, if, so like if the engine was running and you're charging the battery and for some reason something happens to the battery, it's not gonna cut off your engine or it's not gonna hurt your, hurt your battery, that type of thing. So it just keeps them separate, uh, which is a good thing. So underneath here, <laughs> is our one of our batteries and it keeps blinking at us which i'm told is a good thing <laughs> it's like it's intelligence um and then it plugs in this baby plugs into that connector back there the reason i cut that hole is so that the batteries could slide in enough past this little wall so that I could do a, um, an enclosure later on, a bench, because originally we had two separate seats here. When I cut this hole, it weakened this panel a little bit. There's a lip that this floor sits on, so that's one of the other reasons why they reinforced it underneath and through here. Because the batteries, those two batteries are gonna sit right on top of here. So this will be screwed in and it raises it up a little bit there and it'll be pushed up against the, the hull with some padding so we don't wear through the hull because we'll have a leak if that happens. <laughs> There's a leak in the boat. So the heart of the system really I guess would be your batteries. You know, they'd be they'd be indicative almost like the heart of your, your body. It keeps the boat running. When we're on land, we're not really aware of that because we just flick a switch and the power comes on. But on a boat, RV, anything like that where you're not able to just plug into land, um, you need some place to store your energy. And that's what these batteries do. And so what the BMS does, the battery management system, it is like the gatekeeper to the amount of energy that's being stored in your batteries and taken away from your batteries. So depending on what lights you have and what's running in the boat, um, energy will be taken out of your battery. And then there are systems on the boat that charge the battery, like the solar system that we have. We have a generator that'll charge the battery, and we uh, finally have an alternator that will charge the battery. So from the BMS, wires go off to other parts of the boat. So they go off to chargers, they connect to the solar panels, they connect to the alternator, they connect to the generator and all the different lighting uh, pieces of the boat or whatever we're powering the boat with. With the BMS on the charging side of the circuit, things come in, like I said, the solar panels. 
and the solar panels filter through something called charge controllers. The solar panels are converting the sun's energy to power, essentially, or charge. And those charges are being trickled down through into the battery through these charge controllers. They've already been mounted down here. There's four of them. And what they do is they control the amount of charge that is going into the battery. And they will sit underneath our dining room. Right, and they'll sit there. Yes. Which is right. <laughs> where right. we eat. <laughs> the other part of the charging side of the battery is the alternator on the engine. So when the engine is running, just like cars, cars have alternators to charge, to charge their batteries and other things. This engine has an alternator. And the alternator is like right here. This is the one we're putting on. This baby. And so as the engine spins and runs, it, this runs on diesel, it turns this little wheel. And this is essentially a motor. And this motor, it's, it's kind of a reverse motor. So um, what, with a motor, what you do is you apply a little uh, electricity and it runs this and it runs something. With a generator or an alternator, they call it, what this does is when this turns from the power from the energy, this circular energy is converted into electrical energy within the alternator. And the alternator sends that charge to some of the engine, but back through the BMS. And well, actually there's another component. It sends it from the BMS to something called a charge regulator. And then that goes to the BMS and that goes to the battery. So that's another way of charging the battery and you charge the battery by running the engine. What we did is we had a very small alternator on here. Um, it was a stock stock alternator that was probably the, as old as the boat. Our um, original alternator had 85 amps and we um, increased the amount to 185 amps. And that gives us a lot more charging ability when the engine is running at the same rate of speed compared to the other alternator. You know, you look at diagrams, schematic electrical uh, diagrams, and for me, they're, they're very abstract. So I like to be able to take that information I have on paper or a computer and actually see in real life where this stuff goes. Because it looks really pretty and easy to do on paper, but you get on a boat and it's not so much. So the alternator that I just pointed out, this baby is mounted right up in here. And this is the pulley I was talking about. So as the engine runs, it turns this pulley and it turns this wheel right here and that gives us energy. And then that energy goes through the charge controller, which I'll show you. And from the charge controller, it goes to the battery management system and goes into the battery. So that's the second way that we can charge the battery on this boat. He actually took this off. Yep. This was the, a new one. So yep. we took the old one off and mm -hmm. put this in. Why? Yep. Because um, just the way it's set up, they, they changed it into a different type of belt. And then and this. And they changed the, the, probably the ratio of the, if you change the diameter of, of the pulley, you're changing the speed at which, at, at the rate of the, mm -hmm. the charging, the, the, the belt spinning. And this frame was all the way across. Yeah, they had to cut it out, a piece of the frame. Not a big deal. I don't think the boat will sink now. <laughs> but it was right here and as you can see they had to remove this which is a weight this had to pop out and they had to remove there was an old pulley system back here pulley so they had to say nah we're just gonna cut this out and they'll put something back in probably but this comes out and then it was on top of this this new pulley so that's what they had to do there and they have to hook up the new electrical stuff so we couldn't move the boat right now if we wanted to nope does that make you sad so this opens up, gives me access to the engine. Come back here. Here's the controller for the alternator. The alt they call it, I think, a voltage regulator, different names for it. The energy that is pulled out of the alternator goes into this, and then it goes back into the battery. These are two chargers. Everything that goes back into the battery on the charging side Goes, one one goes to the to the big battery, the the, the big the, the three batteries, the 24 volt batteries, the ones I just showed you. But 
the boat is not on 24 volts, it's a 12 volt battery. So therefore we have a step down charger that takes the 24 volts and drops it down to 12 volts and into another battery so that the boat can use that energy. One of them is for the step down charger to charge the house battery, which is 12 volts. So the big 24 volt battery is really just a, a bigger bucket to hold the energy. Um, there's something called Ohm's, Ohm's Law, which is, um, let's see, the, the easiest way would be um, to think about this. Okay, so E is equal to IR, which E is, if you, <laughs> she's, she's laughing at me. So the voltage, he goes with his, his... the voltage is equal to the I, which is the, um, the amperage or the current times the resistance. So a big advantage of using like a higher voltage is if you use a higher voltage, then you have less resistance in the wires because there's less um, flow of electricity through the wires. If you have too much flow of electric electricity through wires, it can heat the wires up and you can have fires. So um, if you have a lower voltage battery and a high um, amps that are going through it, you need big cables. If you decrease the voltage by half, you can decrease the cable diameter by about half. Um, and that is a big savings on copper, on material, bending these big cables throughout the boat. So yeah, saves you a lot of money. A lot of the boats I've been reading, the bigger boats, I think above eh, 40, 45, 50, 60, that size, they've started to use 24 volt systems. And that saves them, I read, a significant amount in the boat cost because of the copper that, they're, that they don't have to use. So that's why we're doing it. So these are the size wires that we're using on the boat. Um, this would be like actually yellow. So this is a negative. The red is hot. And if we were to go with a 12 volt system, they'd be like, they'd be double that size. Anyway, for our cases, it's not a huge copper savings, a little bit, um, because we're not running really, really long lengths of wire. They're pretty short runs. But what it does going with a 24 volt system is it allows us to have twice the amount of energy in the same package, same box essentially. So you get twice the bang for your buck. This right here is the current charger inverter. So what this does is it regulates the charge to the existing batteries and it also converts AC or alternating current to direct current, which are two different ways to transfer energy within a wire, electricity in a wire. Batteries work on direct current. Things like generators and things like that, those are AC, like a house, house um, electricity is AC. It's alternating current. And the reason is if you go back to where it was generated, um, there are these big, huge, huge generators that are either being turned by coal to run, to create steam, which will turn these huge paddles, or hydroelectric water, maybe like at a dam or something like that. So that's just the form of electricity that we're, we're used to because we used it for a long time. But to store energy, they use it uh, DC direct current. So in order to get your useful battery DC um, energy into things like maybe a blow dryer or something that you use that you would use in your house, and you just plug it into your battery, your uh, your boat plug over here. You need something to convert the DC current to the AC current, and that's they call that an inverter. So the um, the current inverter charger that we have right now, we're having replaced with another inverter charger, which will allow us to charge the batteries a lot quicker. That was one of the reasons why I went with it. Okay, so in the next video, guys, we they will be well. They have a lot more work to do. They have to run wires and they have to uh, put a, another couple components on here. And we have to leave and the boat. And we have boat. to leave the boat, yeah. Probably for about a week they told us they're going to kick us off. <laughs> Which, that's fine. So we'll go do something else. Um, but we're being displaced. Uh, so they're going to be um, putting on a, an isolation transformer which will protect people in the water and, and from getting shocked and things like that um, at the aft part of the boat where shore power comes in. That's one thing they'll be doing. They'll be running a lot of wires. They'll be putting in um, some other types of controllers, something called a, 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 a Servo GX, which is really the brains for the whole thing. And, that'll con and that will connect to a display, which allows you to interface with all these different components. So really the boat's getting really smart.
that's that's I think the best way I can say is we're we're giving the boat brains um, because there's going to be a lot of computers on the boat now that control different things, and one of the reasons why I went with a top, um, really top um, uh, materials and and components for this is because of this. It's kind of a newer technology going with lithium ion batteries because it's new and it's just there's a lot there's some things that can go on like you you've seen stories where you know batteries melt down cars blow up somewhat different chemistry but it, that could happen here too if you overcharge the battery uh, a number of things if you let and within the battery this isn't like one big hunk of metal or anything here there's actually uh, lots and lots of little little small little batteries like you you know like an eight uh, um, little uh, 1.5 volt batteries I think they are so little, little, little small ones that you get you know when you put in your flashlights and things like that there's lots of them they all behave as one so they're all able to take all their little voltages and put them all together and become one big volt 24 volts that has to be managed somehow so like if one gets out of whack a little bit like oh one gets 1.5 and one gets down to 0.2 you can't have that happen they have to kind of all stay in the same same area so that's what all the electronics do they keep things. They keep the batteries from running away. There could be thermal runaway on some of these on these batteries. Um, this particular battery, I really liked this because they are um, underwriter laboratory certified. I thought that was a really important feature because they go through a lot of testing, safety testing for the batteries. This is my home, and I know I've experienced a boat fire like once in my life. I was on board, but when I was in the Coast Guard, and it's scary. I mean, like the boat went up like. It was gone very, very, very quickly. You don't want a boat fire on a boat. That's why I'm doing this. So hopefully you guys learned something today with our um, explanation of how our boat is getting upgraded with the new equipment that we're doing, the new batteries and such. And uh, stay tuned for next week. Like, subscribe, hit the bell button so you're notified when our next video comes out because that is going to be the continuation of today's project. Oh no, we gotta wake! Oh my god! Oh my god, the boat's going! Oh my god, the boat's going down, abandon ship! Oh! No, what's going to our batteries? Nothing, because they're awesome. Thanks guys, see you later, bye.